France List was the first in many ways. He was the first to perform solo piano recitals, to play entire music programs from memory, to take the stage before thousands of people, to place the piano parallel to the stage for better acoustics, and to mesmerize the audience with his brilliant technique and charismatic personality. In what has since been dubbed Listomania, he rose to a degree of stardom and popularity not experienced by any performer preceding him. Few other musicians have led such complex lives, earned such contradictory reputation, or left such an influential body of work as Franz Liszt. He was not only a phenomenal performer, but also a prolific composer, teacher, and a musical innovator. He wrote hundreds of pieces for the piano, ranging from lyrical nocturnes to etudes and rhapsodies. Among his best-known works are his fiendishly difficult Annese de Pelerinage, the piano sonata in B minor and his Mephisto waltz. He invented the symphonic poem, a musical form that depicts a story through orchestral music. Whereas earlier performers mostly served the upper class, Liszt attracted a more general audience. He was a friend, musical promoter and benefactor to many great composers, including Frédéric Chopin, Richard Wagner, Hector Berlioz and Robert and Clara Schumann. Franz Liszt was born in Doborian, today known as Reading, Austria, on October 22, 1811. He began to show interest in music at the age of five and started taking piano lessons from his father, Adam Liszt. When he was nine years old, he made his first public appearances. He immediately impressed the local Hungarian magnates, so much so that they pledged to finance his musical education for the next few years. This father took the young prodigy to Vienna, where Franz took piano lessons from the composer and pianist Karl Czerny, former pupil of Beethoven. He also studied composition with Antonio Salieri, the musical director at the Viennese court. He gave several concerts in Vienna, Pest and Buda, which were received with great enthusiasm. In 1823, he traveled to Paris with his father to enroll in the Paris Music Conservatory, but he was not granted entry. Eventually, they returned to Vienna, where Franz continued his musical studies.
1824, they started touring Europe and gave concerts in England, Switzerland and France. Following his father's death, he returned to Paris and his mother moved in with him. They needed money to survive, so Liszt took up teaching aristocratic young ladies. He also became an appointed teacher at a girls' institute. One of his students, Caroline de Saint Creek, was the first of many women who fell under the spell of his charming and charismatic persona. The intellectual center of the 1830s was Paris. Everyone who met her lived here or regularly visited the French capital. The young Liszt was surrounded by the leading lights of Romanticism. He was personally acquainted with Hector Berlioz, Frédéric Chopin, Victor Hugo, Honoré de Balzac, Eugène Delacroix and many others. It was the violinist Niccolò Paganini who had the most decisive influence on him and whose example inspired Liszt to push his piano technique through previously unimaginable difficulties. At the end of the 1830s, Liszt went on another concert tour, traveling all over Europe, from Portugal to Russia. In 1835, he became a teacher at the Geneva Conservatory. He supported the victims of the Pest flood disaster of 1838 with the income of his concerts in Vienna. Not long after, he contributed just as generously to the creation of the Beethoven monument in Bonn. During his concert tour in Russia, he became acquainted with Princess Caroline Zhu Sein Wittgenstein, who later contributed to his literary work and with whom he had a 40-year-long relationship. In the early 1840s, Liszt became the conductor at the court theater in Weimar. Here he popularized and conducted the works of his contemporaries and taught budding musicians and composers from all corners of the continent. He spent two decades in Weimar and it was here that he composed one of his most beautiful oratorios, The Legend of Saint Elizabeth. In his private life, Liszt was involved in several scandals and controversies, such as his affair with the married Countess Marie Dago, with whom he fathered three children. 
Liszt dedicated one of his very first pieces, Di Lorelei, to her. His relationship with Princess Caroline Zu Saint Wittgenstein was never legalized. Caroline was married to Prince Nicholas van Saint Wittgenstein Barburg Ludwigsburg, and she sought direct permission at the Vatican to annul her marriage. After a lengthy process of negotiations, the annulment was temporarily granted and the couple planned to marry in Rome on Liszt's 50th birthday on October 22, 1861. However, her husband and the Russian Tsar managed to quash the permission in the last minute. Following this, their relationship became one of platonic companionship. At around the same time, even worse tragedies hit Liszt. He lost two of his children. Following their death, Liszt began to withdraw from the concert stage and to focus more on his religious pursuits. From 1865, he took minor orders in the Roman Catholic Church and was eventually made an abbot in 1879. two decades of his life, he never accepted monetary compensation for his piano performances again and he taught his students for free. He mainly composed works dealing with ecclesiastical themes. He continued to travel extensively around Europe and spent most of his time in the Pest Weimar Rome Triangle, a term he used to describe this period of his life. In 1875, he was appointed president of the Hungarian Academy of Music, a prestigious institute to which he donated generously. Today, the Academy of Music proudly bears Liszt's name and is the Hungarian stronghold of musicology and musical arts education. Liszt's legacy is immense and lasting. He influenced many composers who came after him, such as Debussy, Rachmaninoff and Bartók. His music is still performed and enjoyed by millions of people around the world. He is widely regarded as one of the greatest pianists of all time, if not the greatest. <laughs>